Hi, this is Claire from Verity Papery, and today I'm going to show you how I made this card, focusing specifically on how to do heat embossing on acetate, and I'll have a bunch of other little tips along the way. To start off with, we're going to be using some turtles from the July My Monthly Hero kit, and we're going to be stamping them onto a piece of die cut cardstock. Once I have my cardstock die cut, I'm going to prep it with some anti-static powder because I want to add a little bit of clear embossing to my turtles to give them a little bit of shine. So what you could do is you could stamp your turtles with the colored ink and then go over them again with Versamark and then add your embossing powder that way. But I kind of like to skip that extra step and I like to ink up my turtles with the Versamark first and then ink them up with the ombre ink and that will give me the stickiness I need and I won't have to stamp it twice. Now for stamping with the Hero Arts Ombre inks, I already have a video in which I detailed how I like to stamp with these, but just as a quick overview here, when inking up with the Hero Arts Ombre inks, um, you really have to do kind of what the website says. You kind of have to do a cha-cha across all the strips of the ink colors and just really kind of blend it in. Don't worry about muddying the ink pads. With pigment, I'd worry about it, but with these dye inks, it's not a huge problem. Really moving it across the entire stamp at different angles will really give it that nice ombre look and you won't have any like strips of blocked color. So I got those turtles stamped. I'm going to stamp this small turtle, add my clear embossing powder, and that panel will be ready for die cutting. So to create the window for the shaker card, I want to die cut a circle because um, it's just easier than trying to hand cut it. I don't want to chop off those turtles, however, so what we're going to be doing is some partial die cutting. So for partial die cutting, basically the concept is that when you put your die through the plates, the pressure is what cuts, presses that die into the paper and that's what makes the cut. So if you just make sure that your part of your paper isn't underneath those plates, no pressure will be applied there and there will be no cut made. So you'll see how I want to cut two sides of the circle and I leave some of that uh, cardstock sticking out and that part of the circle is not going to die cut because there's no plates there to apply the pressure and make the cut. Once I've got that circle cut, I am just going to cut around the turtles and that will create the opening for the shaker. For a little bit of extra detail to the shaker card, I am going to stamp a panel to go behind it using the same uh, stamp set. And I'm doing some more heat embossing. I decided I didn't want it to be super obvious, so I'm actually using pearlescent embossing powder. The clear embossing powder wasn't noticeable enough for me once I added the sequins, so the pearlescent gives a nice kind of shadowy detail and kind of just adds a little bit of extra something to the scene there. So when you're making this panel, make sure that you cut it uh, so that it's almost as wide or as wide as the panel you're putting it behind because it's going to need to seal up the sequins and make sure nothing can come out. Before we hear it though, we're going to be doing some heat embossing with some acetate. So the tricky thing with acetate is it's plastic, so you have to worry about melting it. But I found that when I use this Simon Says Stamp Clear Acetate CD Pockets, that it's a, it's a very thick kind of acetate and it works really well for me. So what I do is I add a, a ton of anti-static powder on both sides just to make sure no embossing powder sticks where it shouldn't be. And then I go in and stamp my sentiment. So embossing powder tries to stick wherever it can anyway, but especially with acetate, it will stick wherever it possibly can. So that's why I coated my plastic piece with this anti-static powder. Now stamping on acetate is kind of tricky because it's a little slippy, but um, I find with practice it's not too difficult. So basically what you need to do is kind of find a nice medium in between applying a lot of pressure, which if you apply too much pressure then the stamp will slide against the acetate versus applying not enough pressure and then you won't get an even impression. So find that nice even medium between the two and when you're stamping try to stamp straight down, don't come in at an angle that will make it slide more likely and just be firm when you're stamping. So now for the actual heat embossing, make sure your gun is heated up and I don't know, give it maybe 30 seconds depending on how long your gun takes to get really hot. And then I'm putting my acetate against this cardboard box because if I let the acetate kind of cool on its own, it will stay warped because you know it's it's plastic and the gun's kind of melting it. So if I as it's melting, as soon as I've got the sentiment embossed, then I just hold it really taut against the cardboard box and wait until it's cooled down and then it will usually dry pretty straight. So 
just make sure your gun's really hot and when you're actually embossing the sentiment, kind of move it around quickly so it's not lingering in one spot and actually melting that spot. So it doesn't, the embossing powder doesn't take that long to actually melt on the acetate. So it's pretty quick and easy, you know, maybe it will take a couple times to get it, but it's actually really fun. So um, I have that sentiment already. It kind of made me think of Finding Nemo, you know, keep on swimming. So that's where I was going with this. And to add the dimension and create that little pocket for the shaker, I'm die cutting some foam paneling, which already has adhesive on one side, which is pretty nice. So I'm going to add adhesive to my panel and adhere my clear piece down and then adhere the foam panel. I'm using some score tape. I just started using this stuff, so I'm not super quick trying to put it down and peel it off, but it works really well with the shaker cut, so I really like it. I don't have to worry about anything coming apart later. So before I add my sequins into the little pocket I've created there, I'm taking my panel and I'm cutting it exactly to where I want it to be adhered, and I'm making sure that I have enough uh, space on both sides so that doesn't leave any gaps for any sequins to fall out. I really have to make sure I plan when I'm uh, figuring out where I want to put my panel and cut it down exactly to size because if I don't, sometimes when I adhere the panel later, I'll find out that I adhered a little bit off center and that really bugs me. So I just try to make sure I have the panel cut down exactly where I want it to go. For the sequins, I used the one also included in the July My Monthly Hero kit and I also added some pink sequins that were also by Lucy. They're not part of the kit, but they're also super pretty. So should look into that. Um, just because the ombre ink had some pink in it and I wanted to bring in a little more of that pink in the actual shaker mix. So for the background of the card, I am taking the wave background stamp by Hero Arts. It's very detailed, it's super pretty, and inking my cardstock up with Versamark in that background, covering it with clear embossing powder, heat embossing, and, and it just gives it a nice little touch. To adhere my panel, I'm also using a mix between my advanced tape glider and then also some score tape just to make sure that it's adhered down really well. And to top it off, I just add some pearls to it and that pretty much finishes off the card. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them on my blog or in the comment section of the YouTube video. And I will also have the supplies listed on the YouTube description and also on my blog. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. God bless. Bye.